What's the crack leads? What is going on? Hope you guys are good and welcome back to the channel. If you're new here and you've stumbled onto this video, we are going to be covering three key formations today. So we've got a meta top 500 style formation and setup and squad setup. We've got a fun squad that if you're bored with the game and you just want to do something a little bit different and kind of expand the gameplay that you were probably used to for the last couple of months, or if you are a newcomer from a, a new player to a mid-game kind of entry point into the series, the first 20 hours, we're going to show you a squad that will just make you a little bit more competitive as you learn the mechanics of the game, right? So we are going to start with the mid-game one. We're going to start with the mid-game one because this is kind of what everyone will probably look at when they are starting their squad, right? So we have actually started with Ten Hag as our manager. We're playing long ball counter for the purposes of this video, lads, right? Player selection, how I've trained them up and stuff like that. If you want a video like that, I do have a center backs and a defensive uh, training, how to train up skills and stats coming soon. If you want me to expand that out to DMF, CMFs, you know, what skills and stats you should focus on, I will do that. And then also up along the pitch as well. But for the intents of this video, right, and the purposes of this video, we are just going to be focusing on the base setup, right? So if you are starting off and you've only got a load of standard players, you can kind of adapt this formation to the standard versions of these cards. So buy Kimmich with the GP, buy Van Dijk, buy Tommy Ashu. But you can use a lot of different players in these positions. You know, you don't have to buy the premium players. We've been playing the game for, you know, since launch. So we have an unbelievably stacked team. But with this formation, right, lads, this is all going to be about how to set your squad up, right? So we are playing long ball counter. I definitely recommend long ball counter strictly because the only reason I recommend it for newcomers is because of that. When defending, it is the deepest defensive line by default with the AI. So as you are learning the mechanics of the game, you will just have a lot of the defense being, you know, dragged back for you automatically, right? The rest of them don't have that. I mean, including quick counter and possession game are extremely high. You will get caught in the break against good sweaty opponents, right? We'll have a look at that in the, in the meta formation in a second, right? But with this formation, all we're focusing on here is being very compact, right? We're playing a 4-2-2-2, but essentially we are playing a 4-4-2, right? Where we're going to be pushing up messy as much as we can, right? So the individual instructions are individual assignments that you can give to each specific player that override their actual team ID or their team play style, right? So with this, we are going to put defensive on our DMF. We're also going to put attacking on Bellingham. So we've got one defensive CMF or DMF, and we've got one attacking CMF or DMF. And then we also have counter target on Bellingham, who we want to stay up there as well. Now, I would probably change this actually with this formation to put on uh, Messi. We don't want Messi tracking back or else Ribery or Barella. Whichever side you like to defend on and attack on, that's where I would put the counter target uh, on the opposite one. So if you like to get back manually and defend with Barella, which I would do in this case, you could leave Ribery up, right? You could also put a counter target on Ribery and Messi if you wanted to be attacking with that, right? Now, the big thing with this one as well is going to be that when we are on in control or we're chasing the game, we're going to be pushing up. This will teach you how to play out wide. Yes, it is high risk. I wouldn't be doing this unless you're like chasing a game. You've not left, left to lose because you will get ripped apart defensively. But you're still keeping central um, with that little kind of Christmas tree formation there between the six boys. And then you have the attack empowered. And if you're 2-1 down with 10 minutes left, you might as well go for it. That's controlled by sub tactic. And again, you're having with your team here, very, very simple setup. You've got one box to box in Bellingham. You've got a DMF anchorman in Casemiro. And you've got your attack and threats, either creative playmakers, box to box, or wingers or hole players. So it doesn't really matter based on their formation um, that you're going to be using here, right? So I would say try this formation out. You're not going to be changing to the sub tactic too often. You're going to be playing straight up a 4 2 2 2. Push forward, go one attacking if you are chasing the game or you're looking for a goal, right? So that is the mid game squad. Now, I'll also take a look at the fun squad before we get to the meta one, right? So the fun squad is for me. The best way of playing if you're just looking for a bit of crack, having a bit of banter, learning the game, and also just controlling the wings, right? Now, you will need to kind of realize that the problem with the gameplay at the moment, right? And it's a big worry I have for when Collar comes back in and I build a squad around Collar as a target man. The biggest problem in the game at the moment is that they've really nerfed aerial threat and the aerial threat of center forwards, right? Yes, you can knock on the ball, but you will miss open headers now with the with the strikers that you wouldn't have missed before, right? So I do think that the, the wingers are more about cutting in, but this is a very fun formation. Again, we've kept the squad the same. As I said, if you don't have these standard caliber players, if you're just starting off and you're saying, how the hell did he get this squad? Look at his squad, look at this, look at that. I would say that, you know, obviously I've been playing the game for a long time, but you can slot in anybody 
into these positions and still get similar results. Not as good results, but you can buy standard Mbappe, you could buy Diaby from Aston Villa, you could buy Diaz from Liverpool, you could buy Matoma from Brighton. All you want is pace and direct running from your wingers. All you want is an anchorman in a box-to-box -box and another box-to-box -box masquerading as an attacking option. But what this is, is all about possession. Just throwing the ball around, having an out ball here from Cardoba to Ribery, Cardoba to Bellingham, and also having an out ball to Mbappe um, or with Kimmich to be able to slot the ball in, right? Now, I would say with this one as well, with the sub tactic, we've gone to a 3 5 2. This is again, if you're either looking to control the game and you're not really conceding that many chances uh, centrally, if it's more out wide, a lot of people still cross, even though it doesn't really work. Or if you're just up, you know, two goals and you want to test out things and have a bit of space in there, you're chasing the game, right? Um, so that is what I would say with that. And individual instructions, again, we've gone for our tried and true tested DMF defensive Casemiro. We've got anchoring or attacking on Bellingham because we want him to either push forward or stay in that same spot. And then counter target on Bellingham as well to push up. We can also throw counter target on one of our wingers, probably Mbappe in this case. So counter target basically means that you just don't come back and track back into the opposition's um, defense. You don't defend the opposition, right? You just stay up and chill out, right? Um, so that's kind of like the fun squad. I love using this. I would probably switch this to out wide um, if there was a manager there that could really play out wide. But possession game is very, very nice for the movement. Just be careful of the high defensive line. So that's the second one. Now onto the big one, right? So this is, listen, if people are playing meta, right? This can be explained by this, okay? Very, very central. You're not using the out wide players. I would even go more central on this, right? Because what you're trying to do is you're trying to get the ball in and have an option between these players at all times, right? You're not focused on these positions out here um, where I'm covering here. You're not focused on those positions. What you're essentially trying to do is get the ball out, cleared from your defense with three center backs that are mobile, versatile. You've got one strong defender across all these formations. You've got a right back or a left back that can play as a center back as well. And you've also got one mobile, versatile uh, center back and then another kind of all around center back. So whichever, you can swap these around if you're deciding, right, this guy that I'm coming up against is playing messy and he's getting on a lot of ball. I need a bit more physicality with Timber or Koundé. All of these guys can play across the whole pitch. And that's what you need. You know what I mean? Even Van Dijk, you could push here if you've got pacey strikers that you're coming up against. But essentially what people are doing that play meta, right? Yes, they are really, really good at the game. Their reflexes, they don't make mistakes, everything. Like if you're a top 500 player, you are obviously very good at the game. But what they do best is that they streamline the gameplay. They streamline the experience. And what will happen is if that you can see the goal against a meta type player, right? Chances are they will carve you up in the exact same way again, even if you're trying to stop it. Because they're passing so quick. The runs are so um, streamlined. Everything is true to center. And the game becomes a case of you're playing him at his own game. So it's very hard to keep on possession. It's very hard to beat the press. To beat a player that plays like this, you need to be able to control the ball possession. And that doesn't really work sometimes against these guys. So if you are looking to take that next step, I would definitely, this is the setup that most top players are using. Sometimes they will change it out to a five at the back as well, or else go into a more traditional four with two attacking midfielders out wide here, um, where they can still get that attacking options going, where they're like more central. So you could kind of have it like this, um, where you've got your two, three attacking midfielders here, or one central midfielder, it doesn't really make a difference to get the runs, and then obviously you're going to be just taking that still at the center back, so you can go a little bit more attacking from that, but it is essentially pretty much the same thing, right, you're just kind of like making the, the changes just slightly, just slightly, because obviously with this one you've got Mbappe here, and with this one Mbappe is going to stay up central, but Ribery is going to push back a little bit. So this would be if you're just trying to control the game. But yeah, for that one, lads, all you're going to be trying to do is keep the meta formation. People talk about meta formation. What it is, is like, it's just what works in the game. Central play, quick, intricate passing, one touch, one touch, one touch, pass, go, pass and go, pass and go, you know, curl shots, tap and go, um, you know, rinsing people in the central position with a touch and go, and then a knock on double shot. 
uh, or a knock on double uh, touch and then a shot. So yeah, that is what I would say to you. But those those are three formations, lads. Let me know if you've got any questions. We've covered everything there. Um, you know, I think there is different formations that you could use. A lot of people use five at the back as well. Um, if they're switching to meta, I mean, you can do that as well quite easily. Uh, a lot of people will do as well because I know people are saying like, oh, but people play five at the back as well. A lot of people will actually do this as well, right? So they'll keep their three center backs there, but they'll also have a left back um, here. And then obviously whatever player they want to use there, they'll have they'll have five at the back. They'll have a double pivot midfield, one box to box, one DMF, and they'll try to do all the damage with these guys here. So that's kind of essentially what they will try and do as well. I've seen a lot of people using that now and maybe swap out Ribery for, you know, a more traditional kind of center forward, um, you know, like a Romari or somebody like that. But again, it depends on personnel. So let me know what you guys think, right? Let me know what your enjoyment is with the game at the moment. And let me know if you've got any questions and we will talk to you guys later. Don't forget to subscribe. Peace.